Hey, what's going on everyone? This is Kiel Dyken and welcome back to the channel. So I want to introduce to all of my subscribers who have never seen me uh, purchase an Orange Pi device before. They've been around for quite some time, but this is the brand new Orange Pi 5. In fact, this is the most powerful single board computer on the market for the price that you can get it for. Uh, currently, I believe these are averaging anywhere between $75 to $85, and they've only been out for about a good three weeks, and they're making some headlines around the retro gaming community. Now, there is no native support for RetroPie. Uh, this still does need a lot of development, but I'm pleased to announce that I have thrown my hat into the fray to get some development working, primarily with Emulation Station, RetroPie, and several other emulators. So uh, before we go into this, let's take a look at the device. It has three USB ports. Uh, it has a USB 2.0 port here, two USB 3.0s. You have uh, this board comes in four different variants. You have an a, a eight gigabyte, 16 gigabyte, 32 gigabyte, and you also have, let's see here, there's a, oh, there's a four gigabyte, eight gigabyte, 16 gigabyte and a 32 gigabyte model. Uh, this is really uh, powerful, it's an eight core processor. Uh, right now you could get these on Amazon or AliExpress. And it has a rock chip, RK3588S, eight, eight core, 64 bit processor. Uh, the main frequency goes up to 2.4 gigahertz and I believe the other processors clock out at somewhere around uh, 1.8 uh, gigahertz. Uh, it also has a, uh, those operate at a quad core Cortex A53. Uh, and uh, this also has a ethernet port adapter on here, HDMI 2.1 out, which is really good. Uh, it has a M.2 slot on the bottom of it. And it also has a SD card slot. So you get the best of both worlds uh, when trying to use a storage device. Uh, again, you have, uh, let's see, a type C power supply adapter. So if you guys have a Raspberry Pi 4, uh, then this will, or if you have some of the other uh, old Droid devices and whatnot out there, all uses the same type of Type C compliancy. So uh, this will work with that as well. And so with this device, um, again, I've never used an Orange Pie device before, um, and I talked to some of the other devs about it too. Like, hey, how come we don't really mess around with the Orange Pie too much? And it was just more or less like, well, you know, it was never really on our radar. But however, now it is. And so uh, after looking at the specs, I did talk to some of the other devs that I know uh, in the community, primarily some of the other uh, devs on the Supreme team. And they were like, Keel, like these, these specs are quite impressive. And, you know, one of the things that was a huge bottleneck with uh, the Pi device, the Pi 4, re or the Raspberry Pi, is the fact that it lacks a lot of GPU processing. In fact, you really don't have any dedicated drivers in fact we even tried to put vulcan on there a lot of emulators don't support it but um i was watching eta prime's video uh it does look promising in fact he ran ps2 emulation on there uh as well as some other psp uh games as well as i believe he was running tatsunoku versus capcom through the uh the dolphin emulator all of that ran well you know a lot of that too can run on the pi device but it lags the video drivers which is one of the things that was really holding it back and so uh, a lot, some of the devs and even myself, we were looking at this and you're we like, wow, like this is something that we could really uh, do with this. So uh, aside from everything that you guys have seen here on the channel, and for those of you who are maybe new, you guys are watching this, wondering who I am. Uh, I went to the um, micro center, got the Raspberry Pi devices, and we were the first ones to port over Retro Pi to the Pi 4 devices when people didn't think it was possible. And then of course we also supported the Pi 4 8 gigabyte model, had all that stuff running as well as having a 64 bit kernel running on the Pi 4. So uh, that's what we do here. Uh, that's what this channel is about in you know some parts. So uh, I am throwing my head into the fray. I am getting some development devices now. Uh, it's gonna take me I think until maybe February or March to get the boards. I placed an order today so I got uh, one for me and got a few more for some of the devs in the community so we could go ahead and get started on this. But uh, some of the things that are a takeaway from us, uh, one of the devs was looking at this and said, hey, you know, there's a huge possibility we could get uh, the original Xbox emulated on this. Uh, also, uh, something else we could get uh, uh, running on this would probably be Technoparrot. 
So that is something else uh, that we are looking at as far as a maybe Techno Parrot, uh, the original Xbox emulation, as well as a few other things that you guys have also uh, seen here on the channel. Uh, but these specs are really impressive right now. The 32 gigabyte, 8 gigabyte, 4 gigabyte. Um, I placed an order for 8 gigabyte. If you are a representative of the company, if you guys want to help uh, with this process to see what we could do to expand upon the development of, about this and you can get me aboard a lot faster, Hey, by all means, reach out to me and uh, send me a little something. But I got some in the mail. Um, I was going to order through AliExpress. They were a little bit cheaper with free shipping. However, they didn't have a confirmation date as to when they were going to send it. And, uh, yeah, so I just had to go ahead and order th order them through Amazon. Uh, this also has 8K video output. So this will also be interested, interesting to see because, as you guys know, another emulator uh, as far as Redream, Works up to 8K on PC. It only goes up to 1080p on the Raspberry Pi 4. So I wonder if we can get the full native 4K uh, video out of this on this board to see if it truly supports it and also if it recognizes it. Uh, again, it supports HDMI 2.1 with 8K video out. It also has an NVMe uh, M.2 SSD drive. So that's a direct shot right into the board itself for the fastest speeds possible. I'll probably put a terabyte in there, whatever, do some speed test on it. But um, and then, of course, uh, if you want to support, they have these are uh, it does have its own operating system and it does support Debian 11 as well as a couple of other uh, operating systems as far as Android right out of the box. Uh, here we have a complete diagram and breakdown of the board. Uh, we have the uh, 2 gigabyte, 4 gigabyte, 8 gigabyte, 16 gigabyte uh, RAM here. Uh, these are the slots. Uh, you also have a micro SD card slot. You also have uh, the mask ROM key. And then, of course, this is your USB 2.0 shared type C here and here. And here's your Ethernet port adapter and USB 3.0, 2.0 above. HDMI out. It has an audio jack here. Uh, this is a. 3.5 millimeter audio jack as well as USB uh, type C uh, type connection. So um, another thing that we were talking about as far as uh, like porting over Supreme Ultra, uh, it is in development to do this type of thing. In fact, uh, this is one of the things that we have been planning uh, for quite some time waiting for the Pi 5 to come out. However, we weren't planning for the Orange Pi. Uh, again, this doesn't, RetroPie does not work for this natively. So guys, please do not go out, buy one of these things. Like, oh yeah, are they going to have RetroPie working on this in a few days or whatever? Uh, spec wise, it should work. But as you guys remember, when the Pi 4 came out, a lot of people went out and bought boxes of that crap. And they had no clue that it wouldn't boot up with RetroPie. They thought it was just automatically work. And then, of course, you had people go out and buy the Pi 4 8 gigabyte model. And then people waited around and was begging and got tired of me teasing Supreme Ultra because they thought, well, it, because they heard people say it's only 8 gigabytes uh, difference, it should work, and it didn't. It did not boot natively. When you're working with single board computers, you cannot just look at specs and just mentally say, hey, something will work. Now, again, on paper, it does look nice and it probably should work, but we believe after everything that we've experienced here on the channel and in the community, you got to test this stuff. You have to test it. You can't make false promises unless you're in the development process uh, because you guys have seen it yourselves here on the channel uh, is what happens if you make promises and you don't have the equipment and you're not in the development mode. But here's the M.2 slot here on the back. You got a backside view of the board. But I'm really impressed with this. I'm happy about it. Again, here's another hardware specif uh, specifications so you guys can see it. But uh, this is my first time throwing in my hat in the fray with the Orange Pie. Um, I did a little dibble and dabbling with the Old Droid once before. But I know this is just a little quick talk through video of it because I don't have it. Uh, approximately, it would take us about maybe two weeks maybe to see really get some development going for RetroPie and also some other uh, emulation gaming, you know, with this. Uh, it's not supported natively, and it was just something that really wasn't on our radar. But uh, it does have my interest, and uh, one of the reasons why I'm interested in this is because uh, the price value. I mean, I don't know if the Raspberry Pi Foundation is going to release something more powerful than this for around the same price range. I mean, for this coming in at around... 
$75, $85 just for the board. And you can get some cases and everything for a couple of dollars on the AliExpress. This is the most powerful uh, single board computer you can buy right now that is pretty much ready to go. In fact, for those of you uh, not too familiar with this, knowing that it already runs Debian 11 and there's some other things already on here compiled for it, this is a huge breakthrough right now for the single board community and also uh, retro gaming because a lot of things honestly did not work. RetroPie, as you guys know, already works with Debian 11. So this is already ahead of the curve compared to what you would normally find uh, with a single board computer. Now, I know a lot of you are anxious. I, think, I definitely want to give a huge shout out and thank you to all of my Patreon uh, people who follow me uh, that help support projects like this unknowingly. <laughs> uh, it definitely does help. And so uh, we would want to go ahead and get this up and running. I'm full steam ahead. We're definitely uh, in the pocket right now to get something up and going here within the next couple months as soon as I get it uh, taken care of and get uh, uh, some development underway. But I just wanted to introduce to all of my uh, new subscribers and current and people watching uh, what we're planning on doing. Uh, as soon as we get this, we can get something going. But yeah, we are looking to see if we could get TechnoParrot running on this. Uh, the you know besides the other SNES, NES stuff, you guys don't want to hear about that because obviously this board can do it. PlayStation, Dreamcast, full speed, N64. See how that really holds up. But uh, this is about four or five times more powerful than the Raspberry Pi 4. And I, I I, know that they have something in development. I just don't know if it stacks up to this. I mean, hopefully it's at least equal. You know, maybe they'll have, you know, uh, more uh, USB ports on here um, compared to this one. But uh, I don't know. For, for the same price range and currently right now, um, even Micro Center, they haven't had a, a huge influx of Raspberry Pi devices uh, you know, on the market or even in store, but Raspberry Pis, uh, Pi fours are still going for what? 150 to $200. Definitely not reasonable right now, you know, as far as a lot of hobbyists are concerned. And so to find a board like this for about 85 bucks, I believe the 16 gigabyte model is approximately 150. So now you're getting something with, that has more power, 16 gigabytes, even though, keep in mind, a lot of emulators and whatnot won't even see that. It'll only see up to maybe four gigabytes at the most. Uh, that's how a lot of the emulators see it. But all in all, this is a huge breakthrough. This will be a hobby project of mine for the next uh, two months. You guys will see some things, you know, here and there. And definitely, if we do release some type of front end, it'll definitely go out to the Patreon members uh, first. And then, obviously, you know, hopefully out to the community. But... This is all brand new territory. Uh, we haven't done any development on it. We, we, we're definitely sure that we could get something working on here. But uh, again, this is a test channel. Uh, we want to make sure that we dot our I's and cross our T's uh, before we make any promises. But looking at the specs, yeah, Techno Parrot should work. We can get the light guns and stuff up and running. And uh, everything you guys have seen, you know, as far as RetroPie. In fact, even the... Uh, display marquee script should work on this you know we were talking and then the other option would be like what you do with the pi 3 was to have it run it through a second pi so uh, you could possibly do the display by hooking this up to another pi and having it uh, slave onto the other one to display on the second monitor uh, that's not nothing new people have done that in the past with the uh, pi 4 pi 3 models uh, for marquees but um, again, so uh, we are here to help, you know, with some development looking at this. It'll be a personal hobby project of ours. But this board looks nice. I mean, for the price and for the money that you're getting up to 8K and Raspberry Pi 4 was struggling with the 4K with additional development. And that was only with certain things and making sure that you're not even going through a capture card. Um, I really like this. In fact, I tried to get uh, two 16 gigabyte models today. They just weren't available. And so uh, if any of you know where I could get a good case, cause I need several good cases uh, for this, I haven't found a good case. I've seen a couple of acrylics, but I like the aluminum type uh, cases with the heat sinks and stuff. But um, if you guys are a company representative or whatever, you guys know anything, please uh, have them drop me a line. Cause we are interested in working with this, but these are some nice specs on this uh, device. And uh, I can't wait to see what we have in store for you and get you guys up and running. So, 
Until then, I will catch you guys next time. Peace out. Like, like and subscribe, and I'll catch you later. Bye-bye.